Hey guys, happy new year. I've been working on some procedural generation stuff and I thought I'll do a video on these trees. Uh, I'm gonna add a footnote here. I do think you're better off doing this in Blender. My implementation in Unity has some limitations, uh, mainly because I used blinds. But it also makes for a good introduction and I'll add some ideas at the end of the video if you want to go further with the project. So these trees are generated using an L system or a Lindenmayer system. Uh, Lindenmayer was a Hungarian biologist and the L systems were devised to formally describe the structure of simple organisms. Actually, the original book is available online for free and I'll link that below if you want to take a look. You can also implement them in Blender with geometry nodes. There's an implementation of these in Houdini. So if you're wondering how do I create a specific type of plant, that's a good resource too. Uh, an L system is a rewriting algorithm. You start with a string called an axiom and a set of rules for replacing a character with a different character or a set of characters. And the rewriting is done for a set number of iterations. Our set of symbols is called an alphabet. F, B, open and closing square brackets, L and an R. F would mean go forward or draw a branch. Uh, B, next iteration of the rewriting, the B is replaced with two branches. Uh, L and R are rotations. And the square brackets indicate a branching off point. When we see an opening square bracket, we save the location we're at, then follow the instructions inside the brackets, draw all the different branches there until we reach the closing bracket. And then we return to that location we saved. So this is the set of symbols uh, used for this example that we're implementing today. Uh, you can have other symbols, you can have more symbols. Originally, these were drawn in 2D in Logo. I don't know if any of you remember Logo. Uh, let me show you how this would have worked in Logo to get a better idea. The string we're drawing here is this. Here's the little turtle with command. Uh, let's say go forward and draw. Then we save the location we're at because we're about to branch off. This end the string would be an opening square bracket. Now we rotate to the left. Then we go forward again. We have reached the closing square bracket. Time to go back to the coordinates we saved earlier. Now rotate to the right and draw a branch forward. I think I totally forgot to save the location and go back to it for the second branch, but you get the idea. For my implementation in Unity, I'll use the following L system using the alphabet that we saw earlier. My axiom is going to be FB and I have two rewrite rules. When I see a branch, I'm going to double its length, so F turns into FF. And when I see a branching off point represented by B, I'm going to put two branches there, one rotated to the left and one rotated to the right. And we will do that for a few iterations, so each branch will be branching off into two branches. Let's start the implementation by doing the string rewrite, and then we'll use that string as a map to build a mesh. I'm going to create an, a new game object and add a script to it. This will be our generator. Let's add some variables. We need a variable to hold the tree string, one for the axiom, an int for the number of iterations. Let's write a function to expand the tree. We need one more variable to be holding the tree string during the expansions. I'm naming this expanded tree. Now for the number of iterations, we will loop through each character of the string and replace it according to the rules we defined earlier. And after each iteration, we'll assign a new string to the tree string. In the start function, let's assign the tree to the axiom and call the expand string function. I'm adding a few debug.log so we can see the string expanding with each step. Thank you. 
Let's set the axiom and the iterations and press play. Here we go. That looks good to me. Let's draw that tree with the gizmos to see that it works the way we want it. And then we will go forward and use the spline API to make it 3D. To be able to save the position we're at when we see a square bracket, let's create a helper class. It would hold a position and a rotation. This way we don't need to have two stacks and we ensure that the information is saved correctly. In our tree generator, we define a stack and a variable to be holding the current set of rotation and location. Let's write a create mesh function and loop through each character of our final tree string. And depending on what it is, we define our instructions. We need a variable to hold the position before we move. Starting with F, let's set our initial position, then change our position by moving forward some amount. We can define that as a serialized field as well, so we can set it from the editor. And for the sake of being able to draw this in the on gizmos draw function, we need to save that data into a data structure. You can't draw gizmos outside of on draw gizmos or on draw gizmos selected, but they also run every editor frame, so it's not the best place to be building the mesh. I'm creating a, a list of lists, each of which is a tuple of vectors, defining where a line starts and ends. And now in the create mesh function, we add to the list the start and the end points of the line. Then we set the initial position for the next iteration. B in our case doesn't give us join instructions. For L and R, we want to do a rotation by some angle. Again, let's define it so we can change it from the editor. open square bracket, we push the rotation and position onto the helper stack. And the closing bracket, we pop the rotation and position of the stack and set it as our current rotation and position. In our start function, after we expand the string, let's also call create mesh. And then in on draw gizmos, let's loop through all the lines and draw them. And back in Unity, let's click play. And here it is, a simple tree. And now the final part, let's use Unity Splines. First, let's take a look at the spline container in the editor. There is a list of splines and each spline has a list of Bezier knots. And let's add some knots. We can then add the spline extrude component and give the spline a cylindrical shape.
To use the spline components, you need to install it from the package manager and I'm using the latest version. Now back in our script, let's add using Unity Engine splines. And in the create mesh function, let's create a new game object and add some components to it. The game object will be created every time we run our game and then it's destroyed. When we use gameObject.addComponent, a reference to that component is returned, so I'm saving those as variables. We're adding a mesh filter and assigning a new mesh to it, then a mesh renderer, and we need a material for it. Again, let's use a variable. We also need a spline container and a spline container comes with one spline already added to it. So I'm choosing to remove it, but you don't have to. Then a spline extrude and we give the spline extrude the container reference. So now I had some trouble with the splines API and I couldn't see a way to grab the splines IDs while I was adding them. Uh, so I ended up writing this extension function to be able to grab them. Uh, I'm leaving this on the screen so you can copy it just at the bottom of your file outside of the tree generator class. And if there's a way to grab them through the API, please let me know. Uh, with that out of the way, let's add our first spline, get its index and add the first Bezier knot to it. I'm adding the auto smooth because without it I had trouble with the normals. In F, let's add the next Bezier knot after the translate. We also want to be keeping a stack of the spline indexes. When we push the position and the rotation, we also want to push the spline index. Here, I'm linking the knots of the two splines uh, when going from one spline to the other. Or well, Originally, I thought this would change the way the spline extrude works and smooth the joints, but honestly, I'm not sure if it did. <laughs> Nonetheless, it's good to know how to link the splines together. You need the two knots to be at the exact same location and the link knots function takes two pairs of spline ID and knot ID. And lastly, when we pop the position and the rotation, we also pop the spline index and set it to the current spline.
and that's it let's test it out okay now our tree is a bit too symmetrical let's add some simple randomness let's say half the time the branch doubles and half the time it doesn't Uh, here is what that looks like. We can also add rotation on the Y axis so the tree is not that flat. Let's try half the time it goes a little bit more to the right and the other half a little bit more to the left. And lastly, let's set the angles to be selected randomly within a range. There's a few interesting papers you can take a look at to get some ideas uh, where you can go from here. The one thing I'm not sure how to do with this spline extrude is to have a variable thickness uh, so it tapers towards the tip. If you know if that's possible, please let me know in the comments. Uh, if not, I think the next step here will be to create the mesh procedurally. If you're interested in that, I'm pretty sure Freya has some really good tutorials on mesh generation. Either way, I'm going to link all the papers below uh, and you can see some different examples from the original book, from some of the other papers and yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun figuring out how to do these trees. It turned out to be easier than I expected it to be when I started and I hope you also enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Bye!